Did you ever wonder what happened after the tortoise beat the hare? When he's beaten by the slow tortoise, young hare feels embarrassed and his worries overwhelm him. What can he do? Scared and anxious, he turns to his mum for help. Mother Hare gives him the strangest advice. She tells him to go and meet the moon. Hi, I'm Sophie, and I'm going to read to you from my book, The Hare and the Moon. Once, long ago, a hare and a tortoise decided to have a race. Do you know the story? It goes like this. Hare was a very fast runner. He was so sure that he could easily beat the tortoise, he decided to take a short nap during the race. And while he slept, the tortoise plodded slowly past him and across the finish line. All the other animals roared with laughter. Hare was so embarrassed. He had been boastful about his speed and all his friends teased him. The snooty fox looked down his long nose at Hare and said, that'll teach you to brag, you silly Hare. Wasn't that unkind? He began to worry. Am I a terrible runner? He thought to himself. Running was his favourite thing to do. He loved the feeling of the wind rushing through his fur, his strong back legs bounding off the warm earth and the wet grass. Running, running, running. There was nothing like it. What will I do if I can't run anymore? He said to himself. Then Hare thought of his friends and of the nasty fox how they had all laughed at him. They must not like me anymore, he thought in dismay. Would they all be talking about him now and saying mean things? Hare couldn't bear to think of it. He looked about him, and all at once, he thought he saw faces out in the darkness, unkind and angry. He felt a dull sickness in his tummy, His fur stood up on end and he began to tremble. His heart drummed speedily. He buried his face in his paws and cried out with fear. His mother sprang to him at once. Whatever is the matter? she asked with great concern. There are scary faces out there, he sobbed. Nobody likes me anymore and I can't run and Fox is going to get me and... and..." whispered Mother Hare. The dark plays tricks. There's no one there, I promise you. Hare wasn't so sure. I know what we should do, continued Mother Hare. Let's go and talk to the moon. Come with me, my love. Despite his fear, Hare followed his mother. The darkness lay thickly all around them. My son, Let me tell you a tale, she began. And she told him a story of the very first hare, how he fell in love with the beautiful shining moon. Would you like to meet her, she said. Hare saw that a gentle silvery light now bathed the grass all around him. The angry faces had disappeared and the night meadow was peaceful and quiet. Look up said Mother Hare. So Hare looked all the way up into the night sky. His mouth fell open in astonishment. To his amazement, he saw a huge silvery white circle shining up there like a great lamp. It was so beautiful that he couldn't take his eyes off it. He thought he heard a gentle whisper. Be still. Have courage. All is well. Who said that? he asked. I am the moon, said a sweet voice. I am with you. All is well. He gazed up at the moon. His thoughts raced, but he said nothing. Instead, he waited, gazing up into the moon's shining face. And as he waited, something extraordinary began to happen. 
his thoughts began to slow down. His body had stopped trembling and he became still. His heartbeat slowed and his fur began to settle down at last. The more he sat still and looked at the moon, the calmer he felt. He forgot to feel afraid and instead he felt warm and peaceful. Eventually, he felt completely at ease. His mother smiled at him and they hopped gently back to their nest. Within moments, Hare fell into a deep and comfortable sleep. The next morning, Hare woke late, yawned and stretched his long legs. It was a beautiful day. He hopped out of bed and began to nibble on a bright yellow dandelion. Just then, he began to remember what had happened the day before, how he had lost the race and been embarrassed in front of everyone, how the other animals had laughed and how alone and afraid he had felt. He started to feel uneasy again. He felt his heart began to beat against his chest and that same dull sickness in his tummy. He stopped eating his dandelion. Across the meadow, he could see a group of his friends chasing each other through the grass. He was afraid to face them. He dropped his head, flattened his ears and took off running in the other direction. All morning, Hare sped across the meadows, running, running, running until he was exhausted. Finally, he plopped down under a hawthorn bush and caught his breath. He felt utterly miserable. He couldn't stop thinking about the race and the other animals. Just then, he remembered the moon and he looked up into the bright sky to find her. He couldn't see her anywhere. She must have gone. Hare whispered to himself, Oh, moon, where are you? I am with you, came a soft reply. Surprised, Hare looked up again. Where could she be? I, I can't see you, moon. Are you there? called Hare. Look within. I am with you, she seemed to reply. Within where? But the moon was silent. So Hare began to look for her. He searched everywhere, within bushes, within hedges. He looked all afternoon but couldn't find her anywhere. Exhausted, he plodded home. I, I think the moon's gone, he told his mother. Moon will never leave us, my love, she said. Sometimes we have to look within to find her. I did. I looked within everything I could see, he cried. Mother Hare tried not to smile. Perhaps it's time for a little rest. So Hare went and sat down under a foxglove and closed his eyes. He thought about the moon and remembered what she had said. Be still, have courage, I am with you, all is well. Where was she then? He could see her in his imagination, her glowing roundness and the softness of her voice. He started to feel a little calmer. His thoughts began to quieten and slow down. All at once, he realised where she was. He had found her within his mind. The more he sat still and thought about the moon, the calmer he felt. He forgot to feel afraid, and instead he felt warm and peaceful. He decided to go and find his friends. When he reached the long meadow, he found them there waiting for him. Hare, there you are, they said happily. Come and play before the sun goes. And they chased each other across the meadow until the shadows grew long and their mothers called them home.
Later that evening, Hare stepped into his leafy bed and got himself ready for sleep. The meadow was peaceful and Hare grew drowsy. But just as he was drifting off, Hare suddenly thought of Fox. All at once, Hare was wide awake. His heart was racing and he began to shiver. His tummy ached again and his fur prickled and stood on end. He sat up and tensed his long ears, listening for any sound. At that moment, he heard a familiar whisper. Be still, have courage, I am with you, all is well. Moon, he breathed. Hare knew what to do. He closed his eyes and he thought of the moon. At once, he saw her lovely face within his imagination. He felt the glow of her light. He felt peace wash over him like warm summer rain and he drifted easily to sleep. Over the next few nights, Hare would be lulled to sleep by the moon's gentle light. And every day when she could no longer be seen, Hare would spend a little time alone to be still and quietly gaze at the moon within his mind. Sometimes the moon shrank and disappeared completely from the sky, but it was only ever for a short while, and then she slowly grew into a great glowing circle once more. Hare knew that she was always there, even if he couldn't see her. He remembered her words, I am with you. Be still, have courage, all is well. One late autumn day, many years later, when he had grown old and wise, and the leaves of his great oak were turning red and gold, Hare lay down in his soft, dry nest. He had lived a long and happy life. He thought of his old friend, the moon, and he smiled to himself. It was time. Hare closed his eyes and drifted gently off into a deep and peaceful sleep from which he never awoke. He had gone to be with the moon at last. And to this day, if you look up into the night sky, you might see him there, running, running, running with his friend, the beautiful shining moon. Can you see him? The end. You've been watching a specially abridged version of The Hare and the Moon, widely praised by Senkos, teachers, therapists, parents, and lecturers in special education. For the full story, with colouring pages and a dedicated supporting workbook, visit sophieshaw.co.uk forward slash book.